Hello again, everyone. Kata Kossman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. Here we are. It is the middle of September and we have passed Labor Day. Yesterday, the August U.S. housing starts came out and it's down. Given that July was a bump up, but it is also down uh, total housing starts over August of 2024. These are all data sets that let us know what is going on with construction framing and with lumber prices so that we can determine the supply demand balance and the market conditions to see how it's going to go for the end of this year and people obviously looking towards spring of next year, 2026, to see if things will pick up. And so the prices if you look back over my videos here, the one I did just before this two weeks ago after Labor Day are leveling off and have dropped. However, the price points for the benchmark items, Western Spruce, Eastern Spruce and Southern Pine on the east side two by fours are showing a very nice stable price trend line over the past two years. So the questions that people have had since the changes to society and great volatility of prices, including lumber from 2020 to 2022, we now have the answers. It might not be the answer people were looking for, depending on where you are, if you're a buyer or a seller. However, we do know that when you look at the previous video that I just did showing the spread, the difference in the spread between each of those prices currently and to what we consider the last normal year of 2019, now we are in a little bit of a different situation. The usual thing that people look for is what is the high and what is the low. And obviously now, given that it's been five years and we are uh, settling into the new normal, that people ask what it is, uh, the annual seasonal up and down of the lumber prices is at around $150 or $200 per thousand board feet, similar to what it was previously, which is one thing that people can look at. The uh, buyers always want to know what is the low because then they can decide whether they should stock up on inventory now or at any given time uh, or if they should hold off and only buy just what they need in case prices drop further. And then the, the producers and the resellers, the wholesalers, they want to know where's the high so that they can determine how they are doing with their sales, whether they should invest more in some logging, whether they should continue at their manufacturing volume, or whether they should curtail. So I've noticed that other analysts talk about that this year, all of the price gains that had happened have now been lost and we are back down to what had previously been the annual low, which was uh, sort of very early in the year, around February. That's normal. There's nothing strange or unusual or notable about that. It is the slowdown time seasonally now. As we head into winter, there is still construction activity going on, but those have already ordered all their wood. That's why the price gets softer. It takes six weeks or longer to get lumber uh, ordered from a producer. And where is the new housing starts going to be in six weeks? Obviously, slower than it is in July and August, right? So let me show you some graphs because there's quite a bit of data that has come out. The housing starts, like I said, we have for August. The Canadian uh, lumber production and manufacturing sales has come out for June. So we have first half of this year data, hard information about where the customer orders are happening. And then of course, because my lumber prices come out every week, 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices since 1952, I'm the third owner. So when the prices come out every week for Madison's, they are for that week. 
So that's why the lumber price data is ahead of all the other data. Not only are those data on a lag, but they only come out once a month. Here are some graphs and I'll get into more detail of what exactly those price points are and let you see those trend lines for yourself. Don't miss out. Subscribe now. Your competitors and colleagues are already using Madison's every week to see what's happening with the lumber market. Go on to our website, click the link here in the caption to see more information about subscribing for yourself. Total U.S. housing starts in August were 1.307 million units, which is down 8.5% from the revised 1.429 million units in July and is down 6% from August of 2024 when it was 1.391 million units. Single-family housing starts, which account for the bulk of home building, in August dropped 7% from July's 957,000 units to a seasonally adjusted rate of 890,000, which is the lowest level since April of 2023. The Madison's Lumber Prices Index for the week ending September 12th, 2025 is US $471 per thousand board feet, which is down 1% or $6 from the previous week when it was $477 and is down 12% or $65 from one month ago when it was $536. Western spruce pine fir 2x4s, which come out of British Columbia, Alberta, Washington State, Oregon, and a little bit out of Idaho, are now selling for US $420 per thousand board feet, which is flat over the week before, and is down $81 or 16% from one month ago when it was $501 per thousand board feet. Southern Yellow Pine on the east side is selling for $345 per thousand board feet, which is down $10 or 3% from the previous week when it was $355 and is down $38 or 10% from one month ago when it was $383 per thousand board feet. This is a two-year rolling price history of those benchmark commodity items. The pink line in the middle is the western spruce. The yellow line also in the middle is southern pine on the east side. And the blue line rising up to the top, that's eastern spruce. People ask me sometimes why is there such a difference in those prices when they are all uh, meet the building code for construction framing, it's because the costs vary in the different regions. Eastern Spruce by far is the highest cost region, as well as because there are much harsh cold winters there, the trees grow more slowly, and so even log costs are higher. In British Columbia, there are some quite high costs in terms of energy and employment, which makes the situation different for each region in terms of what is their cost and what can they charge for the eventual product. Product. So here is the historic highs and lows for those items you were just looking at in the graph. The first column is current price. The second column is the recent high of May 2021. We all know that that was an extreme combination of circumstances that we are not likely to see again. So those high prices are probably never going to happen again. Previous to that, the high was in June of 2018. As you can see, we are now mostly down in comparison to that. However, the previous low in September of 2015, we are now quite a bit higher on these items, indicating what the volatility that we saw that is now over where we are currently in comparison to the past 10 years. And the last graph, here we have Canadian softwood lumber production is the blue bars against sawmill manufacturing sales, the red line showing you from January to June of this year. If you look over to the far right compared to last year, you see that production is down almost 6%. However, sales are up 4.2%, which means prices this year are a little bit higher than they were last year. Okay, so interesting, right? 
these snippets that I put here on YouTube or the small uh, snapshots that we put on the website, always on a lag, are a very small selection of the full list of the lumber prices. As I said before, 500 individual softwood lumber panel commodity prices, all species and grades for construction framing across North America. And so those who need more than just these small snapshots, do subscribe. There is a link here in the caption to fill out a form and get a sample. And then you can see what is the list of those commodities and what is the price for that week. So we are now into the usual time of slowdown for the season. The uh, macro indicators, uh, interest rates and housing starts, uh, timber supply, wildfires, all of these things that affect manufacturing at the sawmills across US and Canada are still up in the air. The uh, difficulty to determine where are things with supply and demand or activity so we can see what to do going forward is still not particularly clear. One thing that does provide a little bit of insight is this, as I'm telling you, stability of the up and down of the annual price changes for the lumber and the uh, stable trend line going over the past two years. So, the important thing to note in the context of this is that many sawmills are still curtailed. The manufacturing volumes, this is the uh, blue uh, bar chart that I just showed you. That was Canada, but you can say similar um, trend for the US also. The manufacturing volumes are low. There is a lot of capacity across North America for more lumber production to come online. Uh, the mills are waiting to see when will demand pick up from this quite muted uh, housing situation we've been in now for two or three years uh, before they, uh, first of all, like I said, invest in more logging to get uh, timber into the mill, uh, but also to ramp up production. So the Canadian mills are, uh, they have approximately, now this is obviously like an average, 15% manufacturing volume available within existing operating facilities right now. That's millions and millions of board feet. In the U.S., a little bit the U.S. is uh, running a little bit higher uh, within its capacity maximum than Canada, uh, s s but still low, uh, like not at the top. So the questions about where is the supply and where will future manufacturing be as uh, definitely housing must pick up at some point simply due to demographics that the um, population reaching first time home buyer age now is uh, well eclipsed where the uh, annualized housing start numbers are. There will have to be an increase at some point because people need somewhere to live. That does not even take into account disasters if there are storms uh, and there needs to be rebuilding. And also wildfires, as we had quite a terrible season this year. However, in a lot of cases in Canada, the fires that we had was not in the merchantable timber supply basket. It was in more remote areas and parks and quite a, quite a bit further north than we've had before, which is alarming for different reasons, but that uh, those trees were never going to go to a mill anyway. So um, what the industry folks, the sawmills have been warning their customers for quite a while now is don't continue to run on such extremely lean inventory. It's called just in time buying where even the uh, stocking wholesalers and the reloads, when they get an order, they go to the mill to uh, request. They are also not uh, increasing their supply 
for the same reason that people think maybe the price will drop. We are probably not going to see those uh, prices drop below where they were at that lower level for this year because the mills will go offline, because the production will reduce. So now it's a question of where's the uplift and where will the uh, customer recognize that prices are stable and only to increase during that usual uh, buying season in uh, at the end of winter and early spring coming up this year in 2026. So check back often because we here uh, watch this every week and uh, my customers who have a log into the dashboard can see every time on Friday where the new prices are and why those prices are changing. We do a 1200 word commentary about all of these things I'm talking about, uh, inventory, log supply, uh, order files at the sawmills currently right now, a little bit of, uh, supposedly at about two weeks, meaning if someone calls a mill right now to order some wood, it will take two weeks before it gets manufactured. I think that this is uh, uh, seems to be kind of long for the time of year precisely because they are curtailed. If a mill is only running four days or if it's only running half time, it will take longer to make the same amount of wood that they make previously when they are running at full capacity. So I'll leave that there for now. I will make another update uh, within a week or two and watch us here at Madison's Lumber Reporter to see where the situation is as it happens.